Good day, dear people. So, why should we print? We have all of the most beautiful and engaging images we could ever wish for right in the palm of our hands. Not to mention a means to share all of our own photographs with an almost unlimited audience. So why resort to what now seems like an archaic method of viewing images? One that will be seen by only a fraction of the people compared to the digital alternative. If you stop to think about it, there are a fair few reasons that start to come to mind. But for me, there is one that really stands out, which I thought I'd share with you all whilst giving you a glimpse into how I print my own work. My own experience of printing started a few years ago when I worked in the seaside town of Bognor Regis in a shop called Sussex Camera Centre. We did a fair bit of printing there and I was lucky enough to work alongside some very lovely people who were more than happy to share their knowledge and expertise. Whilst working there I was asked if I'd like to form a small photography group with the main aim of holding an exhibition. So that's exactly what we did. I did all the printing in the shop using the facilities we had there. And eventually in the nearby city of Chichester I took part in my first exhibition along with five other photographers. I printed around 20 images and one in particular caught the eye of a couple of friends of mine, Ian and Emma. At the time they weren't in a position to buy, however fast forward a few years and things have changed. As a result I recently returned home to print it and get it framed for them. Sadly the shop I used to work at had closed down so I visited a friend who used to work there with me called Tim, who now has the printer in his home. How are you doing? Good, still setting up. I've All just right. plugged in. As some of you watching this may be aware, there are loads of different ways to print that involve very in-depth setups, calibration and expertise. And to be fair, from what I've seen, people who are fully up to speed on those techniques get some brilliant results. However, personally, I print by eye, which I find works for me, but I can imagine wouldn't work for many printing scenarios. I do this by starting with a small low-res version to check the general colours and exposure. If I'm not happy with it, I'll make some small adjustments on whatever software I'm using and print it again. Once I am happy, I print a large high-res version where smaller details and imperfections in the highlights, shadows and colours are far more obvious and noticeable. I want to drop the blacks. Yeah. So maybe it looks a little washed down in the leaves. Yeah, a bit, more, a bit more contrast in it. I also make sure to put it under natural light when checking it so that the colours in artificial lights don't influence the process. At which point there is usually a fair bit of discussion and debate as to whether optimum quality has been achieved. So we're going again, but with only a slight adjustment on the blacks and a slight increase in colour obviously to account for the screen versus what it comes out like on paper. All this brings me to my first reason why I think we should print. Printing improves your photography. Let me explain. As you speak to your friends about your prints and debate the tiniest of details you begin to embrace your inner nerd and discover new things about your photography and your personal style that you wouldn't have realised otherwise. Like how you can get away with far grainier or noisier images when you print compared to viewing it digitally. Or, as you make adjustments, realising you favour darker images like I did. A little darker, I know you like your prints a little bit on the darker side, don't you? I do like a darker print. I do like a darker, I do like a darker print. Personally, once I printed a few, I noticed my composition style was quite repetitive. So now I try to shoot with that in mind so as to avoid falling into a composition purely out of habit and instead look for the composition that would best suit that moment. I think the more experience you have in doing something creative like photography, the harder it is to improve or learn. Personally, I think getting your work to crawl out of the printer into the physical world and hung on the wall is a brilliant way to gain a new perspective and allow you to progress. Which brings me to the next step, framing. Frame of mind are who I use for my exhibition and I've used them ever since. It's been a while since I've been here, probably a year or two. They're super friendly and as well as being excellent framers, they provide training and well-being places for local adults with mental health issues, learning disabilities and dementia. I've linked their website below. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. How's life anyway? Alright. Oh, it's stuck. Just fine, yeah. Don't suppose, if not, we can figure something out. Don't suppose yeah. you got my old, what I had last time on record anyway, do you? Oh, I will have. It's just Excellent. Going back to the so in my opinion, what's the biggest reason we should all be printing our photographs? In short, because images are meant to be looked at. I know, it seems a bit of an obvious statement, but hear me out. Using imagery to communicate feelings, theories or information predates not only our speech but our species. It's thought that cavemen used light bursting through pinholes in animal hides to aid them in creating some of the earliest cave paintings. And that same effect was then used when creating the camera obscura, which helped great minds such as Alhazen and Aristotle to study how light and our eyes worked by observing things like the eclipse in more detail. So why the history lesson? What does this have to do with printing? Well, the first permanent photos weren't developed until the 1800s, but they soon took the world by storm. 
The idea of being able to look at an image of a faraway land, a loved one, or closely study a split second in time was something the world had never seen before, despite coming very close. Up until this point, paintings were about as close as people could get, which weren't always ideal, because they were often open to an artist's interpretation. Because of all this, people very quickly understood the importance of looking at an image, be it in a photo sat on the bedside table that brings comfort as you drift off, or the front page photo of a newspaper capturing the attention or imagination of passers-by in ways that words just can't. So this is the point I'm trying to make. Photos on social media are great, nobody is denying that, but we see so many and actually stop to look at almost none. We skim through them, often missing the point and only ever valuing them based on first impressions. I think it's fair to say we're all guilty at times of taking for granted all that has led up to being able to create and view images so easily. But people used to get so absorbed by photos, really appreciating them and letting them act as a gateway to the past or as a spark of imagination. Personally, I think printing images is one of the few ways we get to experience and appreciate this these days. So pick a photo, print it, stick it on the wall or a shelf somewhere, and give yourself time to look at it, maybe for just a few weeks, a few months, or perhaps years, and see where it takes you. What do you think? I think it's good. Oh, that looks great! <laughs> hey! Oh, it's amazing! That looks really good, doesn't it? Yeah, it's amazing, I love it! Thank you for watching, I know this episode was a little different, but as I've said to a lot of you recently, I'm looking at producing more videos for this channel. So as well as my usual out and about videos, there will hopefully be more and more videos to fill the gaps in between. So don't forget to hit the notification bell on the bottom corner, give this video a like, and hopefully I'll see you next time. And as always, thank you to my patrons for supporting these videos and helping to make them possible.